Hey, it's Chris. Welcome back once again to once another Astro Tutorial video here on Catching Photons. Today's video is about seeing. Seeing is a technical term within the Astro community. It refers to the general observation quality regarding the optical quality of the atmosphere. So the deal is like this. Whenever light travels from space objects, like stars, galaxies, planets, etc, etc, it needs to pass the Earth's atmosphere. And the atmosphere will influence the light, it will refract it, bend it. The atmosphere is something like the very first optical component in your optical system. And like every other component, it needs to be in a good quality. Unfortunately, we can't just buy a better atmosphere. Professional astronomers just go high, building their telescopes on top of mountains, thereby they get rid of most of the atmosphere and will be happy. But we amateur astronomers are stuck within or beneath. Whatever. There are several factors regarding the quality of the air, and so the seeing. First thing is the humidity, so the amount of moisture in the air. A good air is dry as a desert. The less moisture, the less it influences our light path. Second thing is dust and smog. Naturally, little particles floating in midair are not going to help us, so that's bad for seeing. Last thing is air movement. Wind and the mixture of different air layers will disturb the light path massively. You can think of it like a glass of cold water. Watch as I pour boiling water onto it. The water layers won't mix instantaneously, but will form layers with different diffraction properties. This bends light. You see this? Cool, huh? So those factors and others do affect our seeing, but we want to have a look what seeing really looks like. Therefore I took three images. All three images were taken with the exact same setting. The same scope, same optics, same camera. And all three images aim for Venus, our twin planet. My scope is the Skywatcher 750-150 PDS Explorer. I needed a 3x Barlow lens from Omegon and used a ZWO ASI 120 MCS color planetary webcam. Capturing planets means taking short video files and let a software grab the best frames and stack them together to get an even better image. We won't cover this here, there will be a separate video devoted only to planetary imaging. For now, I used the same software, even the same settings for all three attempts. This is planet Venus within the first attempt. You literally see the air move, you can see the planet wobble in our field of view. Venus was a bit low this evening, so the thicker atmosphere caused the different colors of the light to diffract differently. Red on the top, blue to the bottom. The resulting image is a fuzzy blob. I think the software did its best, but there was just not enough contrast data available within this wobbly video. So second attempt. Three and a half months later. Right away you can tell the air was much more calm this evening. You can still see chromatic aberration, so red on the top, blue to the bottom, but not as bad as last time. Contrast is much better this evening. You can clearly see the phase of Venus right in the raw data, that the image shows something like a half Venus. The resulting image therefore is much more sharp. You can see the color, the edges and a smooth transition from bright to black at the terminator. What a difference. And next try. A bit more than one month later. Again you see, what a difference, the air is very calm, Venus doesn't move too much. Compare this, the raw video is nearly as sharp as the sharpened image from last time. And you can see the very smooth terminator transition in the raw data, very cool. So this is the final image from the third session, sharp and high in contrast, well defined edges, smooth transition from light to darkness. And here are the three videos next to each other. Nothing changed, but the air movement, humidity, so the seeing in general. And so seeing will affect everyone, imaging astronomers or purely visual folks. Whether you can spot mountains or ice caps on Mars, the curling clouds on Jupiter, or the Cassini division on Saturn, this will highly depend on the seeing conditions. Some say that a faint and thin haze layer is best for planetary imaging, as it's not about long exposures, but about rapid sequence of images with short exposures to capture the best moment, to freeze the image if you will. Thin haze means no moving air as they say. I haven't tried it yet, but I want to test it as it makes sense to me. Whatsoever. Seeing is important, but it gets even more important if you increase the focal length. If you image giant nebula or big sky regions with short focal length scopes, you won't pay attention to seeing. 
The air won't affect your light path so much that it shifts more than one pixel, so you simply don't have to care. But hunting galaxies with over 2 meters of focal length or capturing planets, in my case with 2.2 meters focal length, this is the range where seeing conditions have a huge impact. <laughs> Whatever. Now you hopefully have an understanding of the importance of the technical term seeing and what it means and what the impact on your observations will be. If you like this video, if you find it useful and want me to create more content like this, hit like and subscribe. And you know what? We're nearly done with the theory part of this tutorial. A few more videos and we will enter the equipment and imaging acquisition part. And I'm looking forward to going through mount assembly, focusing, cable management, all that stuff. Let's keep on. And as always I say, clear skies everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.